fashion. I am fashion. And these words don't ring truer for today. We have with us two people who are fashion. Designers Anamika Khanna and Raghavendra Rathor have been giving fashion ados around the world a way to lend their emotions a voice through their gorgeously evocative outfits. Be it a perfectly tailored Sherwani or a flowy gown, their clothes speak volumes. Anamika Khanna is a self-trained designer extraordinaire, the Kolkata girl with a sharp eye for fashion. She started off with a bang, being the first designer to have an international brand, Anna Mika, and the first to represent India at the Paris Fashion Week. She has been a trailblazer in the world of fashion. Her dhoti pants and drape saris are just a few examples of how she blends Indian craftsmanship with Western trends. Her creations have flashed across the silver screen many a times and are a mainstay of any fashionista's closet. Cause Life is too short to wear boring clothes. Raghavendra Rathor knows men's, like, uh, men's fashion like none other. His royal lineage and 1200 years of family history construct the very foundation of his brand and creative calling. From his hometown, Jodhpur, stems each and every thread of inspiration that forms the very backbone of Raghavendra Rathor Jodhpur brand. After completing his formal education from the Parsons School of Design, Raghavendra Rato worked in Manhattan under Oscar de la Renta and Donna Karen before launching his own label in 1994. It is my absolute pleasure to be in conversation with the truly inspirational and my good friends, Anamika Khanna and Raghavendra Rato. A very warm welcome to you, Anamika and Raghavendra. I am so glad to have you with us here today. So, you, I'd like to I'd like to start by asking, uh, what has been your learning in the last twenty years? You both have been in the business of fashion. What is the most important thing, in your opinion, in running a business? Anamika. Uh, Ritu, thank you. Thank you for having me here, and along with Raghu, it's absolutely an honor, um, and to be in the company of all you fabulous ladies. Thank you. Um, you know, 20 years of this life that uh, we've lived in, in, surrounded with fashion, it made me realize this is what I was born to. I wasn't going to do anything else, and I'm not going to do anything else. This was the biggest learning and realization of my life. I mean, it's been a journey that I'm not going to uh, exchange with anything else. And one just go through life's ups and downs. And then when there are difficult times and all of that, one also realizes that these times don't last forever. That's been my other learning in the last 20 years. You make friends along the way, you love what you do, you live life every day, and that's what it's about. Um, about running a business, I don't know if I'm the right person to answer this, but I do know that one needs to have a very clear vision of why uh, you know, someone's running a business. Besides the business acumen, one also needs that compassion because you're you're responsible for that many people. You need to have constant work, constant work, constant work. You need to be uh, able to take risks. You need to be able to um, actually be judged every single day, especially in our line of work. And Raghu is going to agree with me that whatever we do every day, we wake up in the morning and we judge, oh, this is good and this is bad. So that also, you know, you have to be emotionally, mentally extremely strong. So some of the things that I think uh, go on to make some good business. Right. And Raghavendra, what about you? Well, I think Anamika has summed it up so beautifully. I think it's the, the constant uh, ability to be inquisitive. It's the ability to adapt. Uh, to understand the nuances and also to follow your heart. I think none of us actually had a business plan. Today, when you start a new business, the first thing people ask you is, where's your business plan? Uh, the beauty of at least the 25, 30 designers who started uh, when we all started, I'm talking about 25 years ago, really started with passion and I think built a business which we never thought will go beyond I mean, I started with four tailors in Jodhpur. Uh, it was beyond me to understand that this was not a temporary setup, but to become uh, India's uh, menswear brand, uh, where 
we would have people like Xenia invest in the company. It, it just is amazing to see. Uh, so my advice to my children today is that uh, by being in anything, you are in business. The problem is that you shouldn't wait for something to happen or uh, that's the mistake we all make that we keep on waiting for something to happen or waiting for a business plan to come or an opportunity to come. I, I think if you are thrown in the deep end, uh, you learn how to swim. And I think that's what happened with all of us. We are lucky today, we all have brands. Uh, the press in India works very differently than how the press works elsewhere. People need content. You were content creators in those early years. So each of us got this amazing ability to uh, propagate the message through uh, two newspapers or three newspapers. Today, there are 600 newspapers. It's become so much difficult. So, so I think it's a great advantage to have started when we all did. And I think uh, in Anamika's case, it was pure talent. In my case, I got lucky um, being in Jodhpur and making clothes from, from, from the, the heritage board of Jodhpur. So um, I wish I can have some talent like Anamika. That'll make a big difference oh. in my, my future strategy. <laughs> thank you. No, no. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I don't completely agree there, but thank you. Um, both of you have been very vocal about putting India and Indian craftsmanship on the world map. What made you want to follow this route, Raghavendra? You know, I'd be very honest and frank with you that it, it's the early years with my father. He was a MLA and his constituency was about like one hour away from Jodhpur and I used to catch his little finger and be this little seven or you know kid in the jeep sitting with all sorts of uh, uh, issues that he was resolving for the local tribal people and Bishnois and all this stuff and to me that was a field trip and I could never see the difference between that life in the village that I grew up with with I mean uh, there was a weaver today he runs a hotel in the village but he, his name was Pokya and uh, to get the best dal party churma at his house. And to me, my early years actually was exposure to people who built things. Uh, I didn't, I never understood how they got the combination of the carpets always right without Google or without any textbooks. And many years later, when I was studying design, I always went back to those experiences with my father in the villages where, where people were doing what they do best because they were born into those families. And so I think when you say that, how did you use that in your work? I think I, I think my initiation happened in the in, in the rural part of India, and my idea was to polish it up and represent uh, the same thing. So I didn't invent the bangala. The bangala has been there. My great great grandfather wore it. The first the first bangala that we managed to trace uh, was I think in uh, the uh, almost 12, 1200 years ago. Uh, so it was actually a Sherwani that was becoming a Bangala because the British were here. And so the structure was coming and uh, mm -hmm. people didn't ride horses anymore. So they were getting into shorter clothes. So it's been an amazing adaptation from something that existed. I think uh, it's different in Anamika's case because she has to conjure up new ideas every season after season. Menswear is a little different. We, we work very slow paced fashion. And uh, once you've created it, you just have to make sure you deliver service. Yeah, true. Anamika? Uh, so, you know, for Raghu, it's been like this beautiful, uh, you know, you've sort of grown up there. For me, it was different. I was always exposed to some sort of craft or the other. And then there was this uh, realization early on that there was this huge love for, you know, Indian textile, Indian craft, Indian heritage, which I fortunately got a lot of exposure. You know, I have roots in uh, Jodhpur as well and other parts of Rajasthan. So, you know, uh, my nani and all these people, my mom, they, they've always, it's always been uh, textile and my love affair with textile started then. And then when I started getting into this uh, field, I just realized, you know, we are not being able to conserve what we have because we, we are not re respecting it enough. And we are being used as an outsourcing hub. India was being used to produce things for others. India was being used to dip in, take the craft, do something with it and put your label. And that's, that's something uh, which I felt that, you know, this is ours. And 
why isn't it that our own craft, our own textile, why are we not preserving it? Why is it that we're not giving it enough respect? But I also realized that, um, you know, this craft needs to be presented in a slightly more modern context. It needs to be, you know, you can't really do costumes and present it as wearable everyday garments, right? So um, that cu culmination of craft and the very fact that I wanted to make it modern and this whole journey started that way. And in our own small way, now we very acutely worked with craftsmen. We work with all kinds of things and we sort of bring in our bit to it so that in some way we are preserving it. Um, that's my love affair with craft. So I, I, I mean, this is what I actually wake up every day too and, and I'm like, okay, what am I doing today? And yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that I know. <laughs> so Anamika, your brand uh, of creativity is unlike no other. What drives this creativity, especially modernization of Indian fashion, like, uh, you know, your dhoti pants and your, you know, your all kinds of things that you amalgamate and uh, between the Indian and the Western. Okay. What's your thought process behind this? Uh, see, I've always believed that Creativity is something mm. that, you know, you keep at it, you keep at it, yeah. getting uh, better, you start, relate, you know, automatically this becomes yeah. part of your life. So just, yeah. I think um, in the last 20 years, this is what has happened to me, that non-stop morning to night for 20 years, I have just done this, that I've tried to create something or the other. Uh, having said that, what sparks off my creativity is a bit of madness. You know, you give me a deadline, you tell me the show is approaching and this is your date or you have the shoot on this day or you have to deliver this outfit. My brain goes, you know, into this spiral and automatically just designs start flowing out and my whole office goes like, oh my God, she's that type of kid. She's going to drive us mad. But, you know, the minute uh, there is a deadline and this pressure to deliver and I just start automatically creating, I guess. It's a, it's a, so you keep thinking about it, you keep thinking, you keep researching, you keep looking, you keep working at it. And then finally it just culminates into a product, into a design. And that's how it works for me. It's, it's kind of mad. I mean, yes, I know, I know. And you miss all social events for it. You miss I'm all dinners. Yes, all fun things. We experienced that with you. <laughs> so, Raghavendra, sorry. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> Anshu, can you please mute everyone? Anshu, can you please mute everyone? Yeah. Uh, Raghavendra, you've made the Bandgala and the Jodhpuri so famous. Uh, it's a very traditional style, which you have very stylishly modernized. And it's totally in vogue now. And it's all thanks to you. What inspires your designs? You know, I, I always go back to stories in the house and uh, uh, the real breeches, when you wear it, you need almost two people to pull it off when you're taking it off. And I remember that was my job when my father would come back from functions. Uh, my brother and me would actually stand on the other end and we had to race as to who could take the which leg off. And it was an amazing task because it doesn't come off easily. I mean, that's the real uh, breach. If you ask me, uh, there's something called a lachakni, which uh, expands with, you know, uh, the body that it's sitting on. It's a bias strip and all those things. So to me, it was always fascinating to achieve that milestone when I made the first uh, runway. Because we ironically put the first breaches ever made on Meher Basin uh, in a fashion show that I did in Jodhpur some 25 years ago. And... Uh, so the first customers to me, and I actually was a women's wear designer, so um, it was a fascinating thing that people took real pleasure in wearing the breeches. It was many years later, almost almost a decade later, that we became a men's wear brand and we, we moved, you turned and moved into creating um, these clothes into relics. And then I think the Vidhu Vinod Chopra experience that I uh, saw coming in out where I said, we will use the movie Eklavia to take one relic from our wardrobe and make it, you know, for the celluloid and make it permanently for the masses. And I remember talking to Saif Ali Khan in, 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 before the shoot started for that scene. 
I'd given him a safari suit. And he said, yeah, don't make me look like a babu. You know, I don't want to look like a babu. And I said, wear it. It's been cut very differently. Uh, that worked really well. And then came the first bangala that we actually put out in Bollywood. And uh, he gets out of a helicopter scene and he walks and he's wearing it's a silver button bangala. And I think beyond that, I've really done very little. I've just sort of made it more sophisticated. It's, it's something that you can wear whenever and it's if you buy one today then you can wear it 20 years later uh, that that's the important technique that you to put in that cut the armholes little differently how before people were cutting so to me the the onus on on what i've done is really to take something that existed and give it more contemporary feel and i think the bangala the safari suit uh, the breeches or the traditional bangala waistcoat uh, the the, the idea is that it's it's so familiar to to men's wardrobe in india that you really don't have to do very much uh, unlike in the women's wear uh, you know arena you've got to be thinking of the next collection and this design and that so we've realized that over the years that until you have um, a story i think what is going to happen and especially now after covid uh, people without a story are just going to disappear because no one has the time to go to the stores and we are being judged on a flat surface, whether it's iPad or whether it's iPhone or uh, the mall is this little window that we all have. So how do you make your product different? And I think the ones who are going to be able to survive this is, is pe people who create stories and create emotion in what they do. Uh, so people can have a recall value. And that's been luckily for us uh, in, in the bespoke space each bangala has got a different story. I mean, somebody got a printed bangala made yesterday and before that was some special detail uh, inside. So it's it's about the stories that you weave into clothes. Uh, that, that has been our uh, journey. And I think going forward, I think that will also be a benchmark for most of us. Right. Ritu, may I, Ritu, may I uh, just say, add something here? Yeah. Um, you know, Raghu might just say this in a very humble way that all he's done is uh, take something that that is existed and um, you know modernize it and whatever. But I think it takes a lot more to take something that existed and then to make this as an eternal part of the Indian man's wardrobe. I don't yeah. think I know any single you know Bangala is now like something like a suit that always existed. And I think uh, this entire credit goes single-handedly to Raghu. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's very kind I of you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> so uh, my next question would be that fashion is a dynamic space. How do you maintain your individuality? What are the few uh, few key aspects uh, that uh, of your brand that are its core? Anima Anamika? Um, so I think the most important thing to do would be to I, make an identity for yourself. And once that identity, that vision is clear and you constantly work on what you are and who you are and what you stand for, automatically things start falling in place. Like for us, we have a very clear identity that we are about you know, craft, modernization, or subtle at the same time. And we are always innovating and experimenting. And, uh, you know, all these capes and the softer silhouettes and this whole feminine part of fashion is what we identify with. And I think that's been an important, uh, not just a learning in my life, but I would say this to um, everybody who aspires to be a designer, um, that, you know, there's no point in picking up things from here, there and trying to it's very, very essential to understand who you are, what you stand for, what your the brand that you're building, what is that brand story and all about, yes. That's that's what it's about. Raghavendra. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Um, uh, so my question is fashion is a dynamic space. How do you maintain your individuality? Uh, what are the few key aspects of your brand that are its well, core? You know, the, the important thing really is for you to uh, be in a space that there is less competition in. Um, and it's easily said than done because menswear, uh, there is, it's a factual thing. But uh, the, the, the recall value of people who recommend people is the experience. Uh, 
the product is important yes but it's also how people dealt with you how people did so our relentless uh, effort in making sure there's a team that uh, knows how to talk and how to deal with uh, customers because you're really dealing one on one um so for a bespoke company the most important thing is how you uh, appreciate a customer listen and how much do you listen actually to their inputs uh, i believe most of our uh, products that we design uh, there's a 50 50 partnership uh, i can always suggest that you should do this and that but i always let people talk uh, the team has been trained the three people that work with me on client services they listen and they listen they listen and idea is not to change and deviate from the personality that you are supposed to make clothes for if somebody is a shy person does not understand too much about clothes i think it's wrong for you to put your latest collection on them i think the idea is to have a conversation and say i personally think that you should do this perhaps wear it with denim jeans and so you don't feel very complicating you know when you're um, when when you're actually out there so i think in a bespoke spa space it's 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 a partnership uh, with your customer and you must absolutely understand um, what the customer is asking for so it, you have to be uh, able to give just that uh, and that's that's the way you keep yourself uh, relevant correct correct so plagiarism is real today when a small boutique to a big label is copying you your styles how do you protect your work anamika i'm fed up this happens with you a lot <laughs> and i feel fed up uh, as a matter of fact just yesterday um, you know there is a this is funny incident that happened there's a client who was sending us images of our copy to ask whether we had them in stock so you don't think like this just sort of it's like whatever but the fact is that there is this huge problem of plagiarism especially with us uh, on the one hand you think okay take it as a compliment um because you know your work's being copied but having said that uh, what really bothers me is the fact that okay the you know people around you they're copying they don't have anything but then when designers showing at fashion weeks and stuff are doing it then you know you don't know where to draw the line and how to deal with this actually so i feel at this moment the onus is also on the client who's who might want to understand why they are buying a copy and what does it do to them do they really feel good or do they actually let's say enter a party and back of the head they're like okay we're wearing a copy so i'm not sure how this can be handled and you know with social media and that exposure that you have it's a tricky one and i'm lost in that water floating somewhere trying to figure what could be done and it it is a big bother i have to say yeah and it's even more sad especially when some of our our uh, clients come and tell us oh this is very common where i'm like hello we've not even started making this stuff you know and the problem is it's been released in larger numbers elsewhere because there there's no question of quality there's no nothing you just churn out pieces of copies and you sell them and we are not able to churn out that much because we don't want to so that again sort of affects our business directly and you know to create each design to come up with a new collection it really takes a lot of effort and energy it literally takes the life out of you so sometimes you just feel sure. stuck there you know um, but anyway it's all part of it someday there'll be a solution yeah <laughs> i wish there would be a solution someday raghavendra what's your take on this you know after we got invested by mukesh ambani in our company um i really don't look into that so i just have to point and then there's a legal department that you know sends very severe legal notices uh, so i think the way to do this is to have Uh, partners like RBL and uh, Zenia who uh, do this as a professional mandate. Uh, I think creative people should stay out of uh, getting into the, uh, the 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 sort of boxing matches because these are endless things. Uh, but as a brand owner, rightly said, uh, and Amika, I think it's it always is a concern. But there is a legal energy that deals with these things, and uh, 
we just did this yesterday. We saw a portfolio on somebody's on Behance, which had uh, collateral from the brand. And we just, first we make a phone call. Second, we have somebody very polite speak again to them. Third is a huge legal notice with the indemnity clause. Um, so it's, that's the only way, because if you don't act, uh, people tend to climb all over the place. So uh, unfortunately for menswear, it's difficult to know what's been copied or what's not. Women's wear, I can completely understand the trauma that uh, people like Anamika and other designers who create uh, intellectual product and they have to deal with something like this. Doesn't this include some sort of patent? I mean, how do you send legal notices unless every design is patented? I mean, that's a problem, right? I mean, well, I think, you know, Anamika, I think what, what would be great is that uh, since RBL is now opening up this huge mall in Bombay, uh, which is probably the world's biggest mall. In, um, I think one should have all the designers work with them to be partners in everybody's, you know, I'm sure there's, because the beauty of having a partner like Reliance is that you can use these resources. Because if I had to go make this thing, I would be paying so much to my legal notices. Um, so every time there is concern, we bounce it off the Reliance team they do what they do best and the problems disappear generally. And I think the service can be offered to a lot of people because now they're getting into retail and I'd be very happy to connect the dots Anamika, whenever there is uh, something and have a discussion and see where this can go. We'll connect offline, thanks. So uh, I come to the question that everybody is waiting for <laughs> is about the pandemic COVID-19 happening now. Uh, so how difficult has it been to navigate your business in the last few months? Financially, um, uh, how have you planned the next few months until things get better? And have you noticed any changes in the customer profile right now? Um, and how do you predict the post-COVID era to be? And uh, what difference will it make to your business and how are you going to handle it? Anamika? Uh, okay, I'll answer it. I think uh, this entire uh, few months that we went through the lockdown, it was kind of a revelation, in our, at least in my head, when, you know, there was this insecurity. When people are talking about economies and people are talking about uh, disease and they're talking about sickness, fashion is the last thing on your mind. And there was this huge insecurity that what's going to happen, not just because of your business, but also that very fact that there are these thousands of craftsmen, there are thousands of other people who actually depend on you. And you felt that it was your responsibility to make sure that um, they are looked after. And on the other side, when there is no business, you're not having sales, how long can you pay your rent and how long can you keep looking after them? So there was that huge insecurity and you know we slowly started uh, getting functional in june then there was this issue that uh, you know you need to have social distancing so you can't call all your people into work so the other people uh, who are not working also still need to be paid and um, then the, the issue of transport setting sops in place making sure all the supply chains were affected every everything was at a standstill for six months and then when you review automatically there is this question mark everywhere that what's going to happen uh we got a bit lucky that business did not stall you know sales did not stop there was this very strangely there was this demand and i couldn't understand myself what was going on and as we're moving on it seems to be uh, reviving and it seems to be going back to where it where it was, thanks to the huge amount of uh, celebra celebrations, the weddings, and all of that, um, that we have to uh, we have to acknowledge in our country. So that that's been a really interesting journey to. <coughs> However, having said that, uh, I also see a very big change in um, the mindset of not just people, but my own mindset, my own uh, organization. We are. Uh, we're very, very clear as to uh, being mindful of what we're creating. We're very clear, at least I'm very clear, that I want to leave behind 
some sort of legacy that talks about uh, emotional empathy in design, that talks about um, uh, creating, innovating, honest uh, design, you know, things that have integrity. And I see that change in a lot of clients because nobody is being wasteful at the moment. Nobody is buying on a whim that, you know, oh, I just feel like buying something. Let me just get something. People are thinking and buying. So when they are thinking and buying, I feel they are also buying pieces almost as investment. The other day, uh, somebody actually gave us a compliment and said, you know what, I'm buying a piece of art and it will last with, with me for a long time. And that's what makes us happy. We want to create pieces that are not just for today, that are not just, you know, fashion, that these pieces, we want to give quality, we want to give craftsmanship, that is so important <clears throat> that even after generation, you know, it creates some sort of heritage and legacy. And that's what I'm seeing in clients right now. You know, people want to invest in pe pieces, people want to know why they are buying something, how it was made, who produced it. You know, of late we've been um, incorporating the names of craftsmen in our clothes and that is really interesting because there is some sort of a responsibility in everybody's heads that, you know, um, those people have to be supported as well as everyone else. So it's very interesting to see this change happening. As far as going forward, I somehow, I'm just very positive, you know, I, I really feel that there's going to be an exuberance, there's going to be a vivacity that one hasn't seen before in fashion. So I'm just waiting for that. It's already happening slowly. Is really? <laughs> I, I completely agree with you. I, I actually do. Um, yeah, but I think, that's in my head. I, I just think it's going to be an era of fashion that one hasn't seen in this country. No, I think you're right. Yeah. I think Anamika's point is so well taken that I think there will be a vengeful buying spree in the future. But yeah. uh, also these few months, you will see that younger brands have adapted very fast because they didn't have big overheads and uh, nuances that bigger brands have. The, I think the load and the trouble has been for brands that have been very big uh, to recalibrate, cut down retail space or whatever it is, or stock build up. Um, so I think it's been a beautiful time for young entrepreneurs, young, you know, young designers who are waiting in the lines to expose their product through social media, Instagram, and various different things. So it's, it's, a, it's a bloodbath on the internet now. So when you're posting an image or when you're suggesting an outfit, you need to know now that there are 400 more people who are doing the same thing at half the price. And I think there lies the big problem. So you will see the trends that, uh, you know, this applies obviously not to big brands like uh, Tarun, Anamika, Rohit, and these. I mean, I'm talking about there will be uh, a toned down of stuff because people firstly will be very cautious about the budgets and also the competition that is offering so much of this out there is doing it at half the price. The second thing is that all events are going to be half the size. So the, the people who are going to be uh, working with top designers are going to be very, very uh, personalized experiences they're looking at because now everything is half the size. It's only the family of the groom or only the family of which, which is wonderful because it, it's, it suddenly becomes sustainable. Everything is talking you know, to people saying, oh, I can make this for you, I can make that for you. So I think it's, it's a very interesting awakening of another sense that had been put on the side and this fast fashion had taken over. So going forward, I think you will see that people will be sensitive to now two senses, you know, fast fashion and uh, this period that we are coming out of, uh, which is slow fashion. And I think it's wonderful for young entrepreneurs who are doing things from home, uh, what look what Amazon has done. It's just beyond me to understand. I mean, you type in Raghavendra Rathore and see what pops up. Um, and four years ago, if you told me that Amazon is not your positioning, I'd be like, oh, okay, you're, you're right. Um, I think what it's done for education, because we also run a design school. And I've seen that unlike fashion, we very seamlessly moved on to online classes. Um, so it depends on what business you already are. But in terms of high-end style, high-end fashion, and high-end education, um, uh, there, there are going to be two hemispheres to things. People will always ask about, you know, when the lockdown was on, you had access to people like Anamika. You had access to all these people who were very willing to be part of, uh, of, of discussions on Zoom. 
where have these people gone now that the lockdown's over? So it'll be a reverse psychology going forward. In fact, there will be a bigger crisis ahead of us than the crisis that we are getting out of. So uh, it's just a caution uh, to the wind. So. Right. But do you see a different line of your product coming in, like something more reasonable because people have less disposable income? Anything like that? Mm -hmm. Um, Unfortunately, luxury is luxury. Sorry, Anavika, I cut you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying that, you know, luxury doesn't mean you cut discounts and things, you know, it costs so much to make mm -hmm. that. And Anavika, yes. you know, her clothes beautifully made. You can't offer them at a discount because times are bad. I just think that, yes, you're right. Uh, perhaps a new line can be offered. A but new line. In, yes. in menswear, we are doing excessively. There's a huge focus on shoes and pocket scarves and all the other paraphernalia that goes along. Um, uh, waste sports have become very popular as well, but but there's no uh, strategy for discount and cheaper prices because it tarnishes the brand uh, eventually because it costs so much to make these products. So one switch, switching off will not make it cheaper uh, just because we're going through a bad time. You know, we, we rather calibrate and, and not dispose the product. Uh, some foreign companies are burning the product uh, because of that thing. So. It's, it's how you're positioning your brand. Uh, and I, I think a person like Anita Dongde will say something else. Um, a person like uh, Tarun or uh, Anamika will say something else because it all depends on what kind of products you make. Yeah. Um, sorry, Anamika. Right. right. No, so uh, going forward to what Raghu is saying, uh, like for us, we've just uh, launched the Anamika as we speak. It's actually going live tomorrow. Uh, that's the AKOK collection. And that collection is actually uh, targeting a much younger, more, more fashionable, um, slightly more experimental um, space. But at the same time, um, it is luxury, but it is not necessarily, uh, you know, the high-end expensive couture piece right. make. And this collection yeah. is also uh, realizing that, you know, everyone's meeting in each other's homes, you're lounging mostly in your private spaces, you're, you're not wanting to go over the top every time, unless right. there's a certain occasion to it. So we, uh, you know, launched this collection and it goes live tomorrow, so fingers crossed. And uh, yeah, excited about it. So I think wow. all the best. You know, it's, a, it's, a di it's a platform that gives us this diversity to add in whatever products we want and whatever interests us at that moment or whatever is the need of the hour of the moment. It doesn't affect right. our main line. That's what we are doing. Right. Okay. Okay. So Anamika, this, who is your muse? Who is the fa most fashionable person for you in Bollywood? Okay, I'm going to give you the obvious answer. For me, uh, Sonam has been my muse for a while now. Uh, and along with that, she's also been one of the most fashionable people um, who I have come across in, in Bollywood because she just doesn't not know her fashion. She has, she's like got this vision. So we're talking on phone and she'll be like, Anna, this is what I think and this is in my mind. And before I'm visualizing the outfit, she's visualized the accessory. She knows her bag and her shoes as well. She even knows her hair for that matter. So she's that extent of a fashionista. And when people call her a fashionista, she is truly a diva. She is, for her, uh, you know, more is less. You can put anything and go on and she'll carry it off. She, she just knows it all. I mean, for me, I've been fortunate that I've had the chance to dress her so many times. And, you know, we've built this relationship of understanding what we're talking about. And, uh, yes, yeah, for me, it's Sonam all the way. Of course. But does celebrity styling help? And to what extent does it help your business? So I think India is a country div driven by Bollywood, right? People idolize Hindi movies, film stars are like gods. And uh, it, it's, it's something that you can't run away from. So if a celebrity or an actor endorses your product, automatically it becomes aspirational in this country. So of course it helps. I mean, and what's your take on the airport styles that's so trending right now? <laughs> These poor girls need to be given a break. Let them be in their pajamas. <laughs> the airport. They are being followed by with these cameras everywhere. And I kind of feel sad because sometimes stylists want to source airport looks. And I'm thinking, hello, I mean, 
what the hell is going on i really feel let them be in their pajamas and let them be that's my take on it sure so rakavendra who's your muse i see you dressing up anil kapoor and uh, saif ali khan and no, everyone so, out there pretty think, much uh, we we generally um, work very very closely with uh, nawab saab patodi of course uh, and now hopefully doing some special stuff for his wife as well so i think he understands clothes uh, like no other um, uh, mr kapoor is also somebody who's um, i mean you can carry clothes that are designed for 20 year old people so uh, my uh, experience with people in bollywood has been wonderful because when we did for oh my god we designed stuff for uh, so this is how much i know bollywood so i'm i'm not a hindi movie guy at all so oh but, my but god the, was amitabh bachchan no no is no, akshay kumar so when akshay, akshay kumar, said i yes. want all the looks of me being krishna <laughs> so we gave him a whole mood board and i said okay what do you like so we do very selective things which are basically about bespoke and um, but in terms of personal dressing i think asaf and we have a good we message each other every day new looks um, what he sends becomes part of the mood board sometimes so uh, to me he has uh, uh, the pulse on you know the fashion pulse international fashion pulse on his finger and also he understands the clothing that uh, that we are trying to do which is very timeless nothing to do with trends we had an amazing experience with mr uh, kapoor who who knows what he wants you know he, he has two options he likes this and then that's it there's nothing and obviously i'm i'm sure he's reaching out to anamika or to sonam to get the last word on it so um, but our, our interaction really has been on a personal level less on for functions and all that stuff i think uh, the brand is uh, we are working a lot with royalty uh, european royalty right now uh, and they are some of them are very big movie stars and so i think the influence is such a global thing and when you walk into the office you see all these faces of people that i actually don't know and uh, uh, a lot of middle eastern royalty that uh, suddenly is on the mood board and i was like what are you guys doing for them and so to me it's it's a it's it's a a lot of museum of wonderful human being and they all are very humble and they understand the the code of conduct nobody is into this i mean there are two people are very flashy uh, flashy when i said they don't want they, they don't want shirts inside they want the jacket and a locket hanging out and so i was like okay so the brand is going through this amazing volley of having classic people on one side and very very trendy young people uh, and this is i think this is, it has been more so now in the last 5 months than than the months uh, that we were always so busy doing wedding clothes or whatever it is right and who's your most fashionable a uh, person in bollywood according to you you know it's it's unfair to say one person i've had the pleasure in my lifetime to work with uh, so many people and i think each person has their like mr bachan uh, does not waste your time and you know he'll he's so specific about what he wants uh, as i said mr kapoor is he he wants to see three things that he he knows which one will work um uh, and all the kapoors are very very uh, proactive you see they they are actually partly the designers uh, and when it comes to somebody like a saif ali khan i think uh, i actually draw on the phone the uh, corrections on the outfit that we had, i mean for his big uh, birthday we made this amazing uh, robe for him and it was all done on the iphone there and then back and forth back and forth so to me i think they are actually the real designers we are just people who capture all the information and represent what they like so so it's a it's a volley of a lot of people from bollywood right right so fashion trends repeat and styles to come in full circle which yesteryear's trend would you really like to see come back um uh, should i answer Yeah, yes please. anamika please this is only anamika's question it's a fashion <laughs> trendy question so no you know uh, ragu i have to clarify this there was a time um, many years ago almost like 15 years ago i used to eat trend reports 
and trend books and forecasts for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I couldn't function because I needed to know everything that's going to happen, that is happening, or it's you know that's the future. I couldn't function without that. But as you know, as time is going by, more and more, you know, I've let go of all the trend books. I've let go of all the forecasting. I've let go of following fashion as such, and I'm basically following my gut. You know now. Well, because you have become the trend leader, you are the person people are following now. So it, it's it's I, it's a very logical. No, it's true. It's a fact because yeah. you did that beautiful uh, alphabet printed uh, concept, and what happened after that, I know. So I think we all in our lives and our journeys start looking at these things because we are trying to pitch our brands in Europe and uh, elsewhere, and then we realize that somewhere we are doing something right, and therefore people are. constantly sort of asking for engagements and then you don't realize when it changes and i think uh, i know that point where you became uh, a sensation in terms of creativity i mean what was coming out of your atelier and i remember visiting your store i mean your atelier and i, I think you barely gave me 10 minutes because there were so many people coming in and going out and and that wooden table where you think uh, uh, i i i saw the No, so the point I'm making is that it's it's actually um, it's amazing that you say that and it's captured uh, that uh, very few people can actually see this journey become actually a trend leader. And I think in your case, especially a uh, couple of other designers um, in in Delhi, I know I I've, I've seen their career. Uh, they're they're not following trend reports. In fact, we majority of us stop following. global trends because india became itself uh, such a prominent market yeah. uh, the young designers i think rahul mishra and they're all still uh, following it they're also leading trends in europe but i think the market has also given us this amazing aptitude to look inwards and and say that this is actually what i'm going to put this season and i think great learning from your uh, brand and i think in in men's way it's unfortunately not so complex because a bungalow is a bungalow one can uh, modify it here and there but uh, it's how you service the person what else can you add to it is where the challenge is being for us you know going forward on this one uh, you know when we talking about the indian market i have to add we've also offered so much design we've offered so many choices and we continue to offer so many choices that people literally come and say what else is new you know and that's our own doing and then sometimes I'm flabbergasted I'm like you know what I don't have an answer anymore it's it's kind of anyway going I'm going back to Ritu's question because I love this whole 1920s era of fashion which I can't get out of my head and I just feel that this exuberance happened exactly after the world war and you know people went to dressing with a vengeance they did everything they could and when i say i'm optimistic about what's going to happen post covid that's post my reference yeah. so i just feel you know the that's good to hear <laughs> that's really good to hear <laughs> something to look forward to i hope so so <laughs> ragu tell us uh, how you wish to continue your brand through the years uh, what are the plans for expansion tell us about your italian collaboration with zenia well we we have access to the most amazing fabrics um, we um, when i went to see the factories um, uh, they just blew my mind because i think when they say handmade they really mean handmade it's it's not somebody sitting on a sewing machine it's really handmade with people who are uh, very expensive creating these beautiful products so all our shoes are now made in italy uh, uh, styled of course in jodhpur and made in italy so it's it's this amazing uh, inspiration from when the british were in jodhpur all the shoes were, for the pilots were made in a tiny factory in jodhpur and i was thinking of buying that machine and reviving that story but uh, the problem is that the quality standards that we have given away has really disappointed production of uh, luxury merchandise in india there's so few people who understand the protocols um, so you, you want a, a shoe that will last you for 25 years you know where do you begin so my journey in uh, getting my 
products now made in Italy has disappointingly taken me in there because I initially went to all the factories in India to get the shoes made. Uh, but I'm very happy to say that they have not had a single problem saying that it's an India product. We are just basically doing what you were doing 20 years ago where India was a production market. So we are using their machines, their technology, but the styles, they still have that uh, pink, pink India story in it, which is what uh, I think Zenia has been an amazing eye experience. I went to see the, 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 uh, the presentation to see how it's done in the boardrooms, the kind of discussion that happened. It's an experience, I think, uh, that I can come back and I eventually pass it on to the product that eventually uh, the, the customers feel. So uh, I think anybody who has an international partner would, would be able to feel the same. Um, in, in respect to in terms of what the future plans are, I think we, we don't want to go gung-ho. We are very, very cautious. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the experience is, so first was to enrich the product. Uh, opening stores is not an issue, uh, especially now with uh, everything going back to square one and then starting all over again. The question is that what is your story now uh, post-COVID? So I think that discovery is what we are at right now, focusing on accessories and products a lot more than clothing. Right. That's where the trend is heading. Right. So, Anamika, for you, how have your boys, the twins, uh, brought about a change in the label, especially with the launch of the very trendy AKOK, which I personally love wearing? How did AKOK germinate? Tell us the story. Uh, so, having the boys join the business has been, you know, almost like when you inject the energy of youth somewhere. And it just revives something that may have uh, been waning for a while. And that's what's happened. Um, the boys, interestingly, have been making a lot of small things. You know, putting in systems. Nothing is drastic. It's all small. But we are constantly now, um, you know, striving to get better. And uh, interestingly, they have a very clear viewpoint. They don't want to mess with what already is. They want to add in small ways that they can. So it's really great energy to be on this discussion table with the boys, even at home over the dinner table. We have very uh, amazing discussions on art. We have amazing discussions on uh, which designer has done what, what collection has been launched, what's been the market strategy for someone, and you know all of that. Uh, art, art at the moment has taken priority over everything else at home because Viraj in his lockdown discovered himself in this different... As an artist. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And I'm actually surprised with the kind of work he's coming out with. And yeah, they are beautiful. themselves stealing that work for AKOK as well. So AKOK right. is an exciting new launch which is... Like I'm saying that the energy Back and you know, going through these times when one felt that, um, am I ever going to design again? And there were a lot of moments like that. That am I ever able going to be able to think again? And these boys are returned from the U.S. and every you know how they use this. Everything's going to be a okay in the U.S. for a lot of things. And these boys constantly kept saying everything's going to be okay, Mama. And one fine day, one of them was like, everything's going to be a okay, okay, Mom. And uh, the minute this whole AKOK came around, it just converted into a new conversation. And we mm. all started saying, or my friends started saying, in the hospital, they were like, it's AKOK. It's, I mean, you know, and interestingly, this came out of that space. You know, so the story wow. actually... Sounds beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it's right. really close to my heart. Yeah, yeah. So we'll move on to some questions from the audience. Uh, Garima, do you have any questions from the audience? Kavita, any questions? Yeah, sorry, I'll I'll just ask the questions. Garima had to step out for a minute. So there's a question from um, Suman Gatani. What are the challenges to be a self-taught designer? Uh, I'm also one of them, but at times I lose my confidence in front of designers who are from fashion schools. 
Um, can I answer that? Please, please. Um, so there are pros and cons to this situation. Um, fortunately, when I started out, there was this space to make mistakes. You know, I learned as I went. I didn't think of what a fabric was. Uh, you, today is a uh, it, today in this uh, time and day the competition is so huge that you don't have the chance to make mistakes. So then, the amount of work required will be probably twenty times more than what I may have done. Um, having said that, being self-taught also gives you the freedom to think for your own. You're not bound by anything. You're not really constricted in thoughts that someone else is giving you. You're finding your own journey. You're finding your own space, and that's what's happened to me actually. As I've gone along, I've not had anyone tell me this is right and this is wrong. I've learned on my own, and that's that's great actually. So sometimes when you feel shaky, just work a little bit more harder. And it helps. Your skin shines, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Ravindra, would you like to go ahead? Samita makes her own skin products, and they're amazing. Okay, we'll connect later. Any time, my pleasure, my pleasure. Uh, Ravindra, would you like to answer that question as well, or should I ask you another one? No, I'm, I, I think what Anamika said is so inspiring, and I think you know the thing is, uh, as I said always, that just be, just do something. You know that the trick is that if you wait to do business, it'll never happen. So if somebody is doing business, you will be surprised to see how opportunities come. And if there is inhibition uh, because of peer pressure or uh, for people who have gone to a training school, you know, put earbuds in your ear and just march on. I think there there is no better advice than what Anamika said. That I think the 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 industry is designed in such a way is to attack other people. I mean, it's 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 a constant. Uh, it's it's like being in a video game, being shot at. Uh, so one has to be resilient. Uh, and I think the good thing is in fashion, and only in fashion is that you can make two mistakes a year and you still be fine because you have summer collection and you have a winter collection. Then you have a resort collection. So if you have a bad experience of Lack of confidence and do a dirty collection that doesn't do well. You luckily, it's not like jewelry where once you spend the money, then then you've got some huge investment stuck. Uh, so I think one should see the positive energy in in the world of design. Uh, it can be anything. Uh, but as I rightly heard what Anamika said, that you know, uh, you don't need to take negative energy when you're going along. You take the positive and make the best of it. And just remember that you're as good as what you create, rather than all the genres that you come from, and so and so and this and that. I think if your product is nice, they will come back to you. But if you're a prodigy of something which is not natural, and you're because so and so is school or whatever you are, they will not come back to you because people are people. They have so much choice and so much options. So it's a it's a very democratic marketplace. So invest all your energy in the product, and tell a story for every product. Yeah. Uh, Ritu, should we ask one more question or are we out of time? Sorry. Yeah, I think we're out of time. So we come to an end of this session. Anamika and Raghavendra, we at Flow have had an enlightening afternoon with you. And thank you so very much. And uh, now I hand over to our core committee member, Kavita, to give a vote of thanks. Uh, thanks. So thank you so much, uh, Anamika and Raghavendra. Um, I know we have many fans uh, of your fashion and of you in the audience. Um, for myself, I think I had an amazing afternoon. I learned so much. Uh, I've been an ardent fan um, of, of yours and Amika, I think forever. And I loved when you brought in the fact that it's it just resonated, I think with everyone, how you brought in, you know, the old traditional embroideries and the old um, uh, ration with the Zari and made into modern silhouettes. I mean, I don't think there's anyone I know Yes, one and Amika outfit or the dhoti pants. I mean, it became everyone's staple. And uh, in fact, uh, I'm talking about international fashion. We were at a, a family wedding in, in Montreal last two years ago, actually last summer, no one traveled. And I don't know how many people came up to me and asked me, where is this outfit from? 
So thank you so much. Uh, and Raghavendra, um, so my son who's 18 years old is a huge fan. My husband of course was, but for an 18 year old to say that, no, I only want to wear his bangala to, you know, a wedding and the family or a particular event is amazing. And he doesn't want the locket outside the jacket. He wants a traditional thing with the kerchief, <laughs> very proper. So, um, you know, huge young fan base. So thank you so and much. He's, it he's, makes he's, very, he's, he's got good taste uh, to say. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yes, of course. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, and thank you so much to all our members who joined in today uh, for making this uh, such a lovely event. And we look forward to seeing you soon again at the next event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.